How many soccer balls fit into a helicopter? How much laundry detergent is used in India per year? What's the weight of the Empire State Building? Google, Twitter, Microsoft and many other tech companies are infamous for asking these seemingly weird but pretty interesting estimation questions, also known as the Fermi problems. These questions are common in case interviews, software engineering interviews and especially product management interviews. So how is a PM interviewee supposed to answer these questions? Are you expected to come up with a reasonable final number? Is there a particular strategy the interviewer is seeking out? Let's find out. Generally, with these estimation questions, there are a variety of great approaches. Think about the problem critically and explain to the interviewer beforehand how you are planning to go about answering the question. We recommend using a four-step approach to answer product estimation questions. Let's discuss each one by one. 1. Scope out the problem. 2. Map out your calculations. 3. Round numbers and calculate. And fourth, sense check your results. So step one is to ask clarification questions. The first thing you should do is pause, reflect, and if desired, find out additional context by asking a few clarification questions to make sure that you identify exactly what number you need to calculate. In addition, this is also a great way to buy yourself some time. While your conscious brain asks these questions, your subconscious brain should already start working on step two of the approach, which is to map out your calculations. Once you know exactly what number you want to calculate, you then need to map the calculation steps to get to that number. This is where you break down the problem into its individual constituents. And we will explain what we mean by this in just a sec. Another important point here is, if you struggle to find a starting point for breaking down a problem, an alternative approach is to begin from the number you want to calculate and draw an issue tree from top to bottom. The advantage of this particular approach is that it will force you to be mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. Let us go ahead and explain this with a simple example. Let's say the interviewer is asking you to go ahead and calculate the quantity of gas consumed by personal cars in a particular geography. Now, so rather than blindly identifying a number, a simple approach is to first have an approximation of the overall population of that particular geography, then use that number to identify an approx number of personal cars in that geography, then approximate the average consumption of a personal car to arrive at the estimate for total consumption. Step 3 is to go ahead round numbers and then calculate. Now post arriving at a structure to answer your question and identifying the individual constituents of your overall estimation, you should always validate your approach with your interviewer by telling them the different calculation steps you are going to take before starting to calculate numbers. This is important because it gives your interviewer a chance to rectify your course of action if they had another plan in mind. Skipping this validation step is extremely risky because your interviewer might realize too late in the exercise that you are approaching the problem in a different way to what they wanted. In our experience, it's almost impossible to recover from that particular situation. Now, once you have agreed on an approach, it's time to start calculating. You will need various data points to get to your final estimate. Now, in most cases, your interviewer will ask you to make your own assumptions to get to the final number. But in some other cases, they might share some valuable data with you as well. So make sure that you actually keep on asking questions. When making assumption, it is vital that you pick simple numbers. For instance, number of days in an year is not 365. In our case, it will be 350. Rounding numbers will make your calculations easier and decrease your likelihood of making a mistake. In addition, you should always talk out loud when doing calculations so that your interviewer can follow your thought process. Know that your interviewer is interested in what's going on in your head rather than the final result. 
Now, once you have arrived at a final result, step four is to sense check your results. Now, most candidates out there, they stop talking at the end of step three. They look up and they expect their interviewer to tell them if they got the right answer or not. Now, this is always a mistake. The best candidates out there, they sense check their results and they try to spot their own mistakes before telling their interviewer that they are done. Mental calculation errors, they happen frequently. If your interviewer spots some mistake in your calculations, this will definitely play against you. But if you spot your own mistake, you still have a chance. All right, so now that you know what technique to use to answer product estimation questions, let's apply it to an example in a mock interview scenario. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm good, thanks. The question that I have for you today is, Dash, you have a grocery delivery service that delivers food within 24 hours. How many trucks would you need to operate it? All right, so let me jot down all of this. Uh, so we're talking about grocery delivery. Uh, we're specifically talking about food. Uh, 24 hours is the delivery time, and I need to estimate the number of trucks here. Okay, perfect. So first things first, I have a few questions that I need to get clarified. Sure. Uh, when we say grocery, are these perishable goods? Yes. Uh, which region does this service operate in and what is the overall service area? Let's focus on San Francisco Bay Area. All right. Uh, next is how many customers does it serve? Basically, what I mean is how many people have signed up for our service? We can assume all Bay Area as TAM. Okay. Uh, the next is, okay, are new users signing up for the service or are we focused on supporting the existing users only here? Let's just focus on the existing users. Perfect. Uh, next, um, are there any competitors? What's like? What's our market penetration here? Let's assume that there is no one else who is currently doing grocery delivery in San Francisco right now, and this company is going to serve the entire eligible population of grocery delivery customers. Perfect. Okay, let me give you a basic approach. So I would start by looking at two main components, okay, which is uh, grocery delivery orders per day. And the second one is around truck delivery throughput per day. Now the trend, I'm pretty sure it varies from hour to hour. So I'm assuming you are asking an average on any given day. Hope that is okay. Yes. Perfect. Uh, can we also assume that this service will only serve grocery to households or do we need to consider commercial purposes such as delivery to our restaurants, etc. as well? Let's only focus on households for this example scenario. Good, okay. Alright, so let's start with the approximation and I'll try to drill it down from the fundamental of, okay, what exactly is the population of the Bay Area? So, Let's assume uh, the overall population of the Bay Area is approximately 10 million. And uh, let's consider the average family size as three people. So this brings the overall number of households to around approximately around 3 million. Now, I'm going to assume that a total of one third of these houses want to get their groceries home delivered. So this brings our number to 1 million. Now, I'm assuming since we are Amazon, we are one of the largest players in the ecosystem, we can assume our penetration is somewhere around, let's say, 50%. And of course, in reality, I'll need data to validate this. So a total of 500,000 households will order from us. Make sense? Sounds good. Okay. All right. Uh, next, let's see if these are perishable goods and... Uh, if every household it orders two times a week, that brings our daily delivery number to somewhere around, okay, 500 into two, whole upon seven. So that's approximately 140,000 deliveries every single day. All right, uh, moving on. Um, now, can I assume that the delivery is happening during daylight hours from, let's say, nine in the morning to 7 p.m. in the evening? Go ahead. Perfect, okay. Now, uh, from experience, I can say that for every delivery, the truck, let's say it takes 10 minutes, and I should assume that we'll give the delivery truck the optimal route for their journey every day. Make sense? Yes. Perfect, got it. Okay, so let's say that each truck can take 100 orders at a time and needs to make 50 stops to deliver these. Since, and the reason I'm taking 50 here is since some people live in condo apartments, I'll assume a truck can overall deliver two households with one stop on average in this particular case. 
So on average, each round of delivery of 100 orders takes 50 stops into 10 minutes. So that's a total of 500 minutes. Uh, let's add another 100 minutes to count for break, gas, filling up the truck in the beginning. So you get somewhere around 600 minutes or 10 hours per day per truck for delivering 100 orders. Next, I think uh, what I'll do is I'll take the total number of orders, I'll divide by the number of orders processed per day per truck that will give me the required number of trucks. Hence, the total number of trucks will be 140,000 upon 100 or 1400 trucks. But of course, that's just an approximation here. So let me just sense check that I have done every calculation right. So we had 10 million that went to 3 million households went to 1 million home delivery, 500,000 are penetration for 50% uh, into 2 by 7, yeah, 140,000 deliveries per day, uh, 100 orders per day, yeah, 1,400 trucks. Yeah, that is my estimate for the huge area like a bay, like the Bay Area or San Francisco Bay Area, yeah. Sounds about right. Now we just have a few minutes, but tell me a few things that would act as limitations in your aforementioned method. Okay, uh, let me think. So... Of course, the first one is the fact that clustering, it truly really depends on how orders are actually placed. The time between drops may be longer or shorter, which may impact the overall throughput of the delivery trucks. Uh, second, I think uh, from top of mind, one thing that I can think of is, I'm not sure if the typical delivery van can hold 100 grocery drops per day. At the same time, having to go back to the depot or the warehouse would impact the number of deliveries, of course. Next, uh, I think, yeah, there's one more which I can think of, which is around the legal front. So I'm using a 10 hour day. There might be some local legal constraints like the labor law, which may require the driver to not work all day, etc. This will, of course, change our overall throughput as well. Yeah, so I think those are some limitations I can think of from the top of my head. Let me know what you think. That is good. Thanks a ton. Take care and have a good day. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. All right. So that was a sample answer using the four-step approach to answer an estimation question. Lastly, let's look at certain points to keep in mind before going into any interview that might involve a product estimation question. First, memorize basic facts. Before you even go to the interview, Take time to memorize a few basic numbers and we don't mean to memorize, we always mean try to have a, an approximate idea, try to have the general awareness because it's almost always helpful to have these numbers in mind to bound your answer with reasonable estimates and most of the time these basic facts will help you in your solution. For example, taking 5 billion as the ballpark for worldwide internet users or 1.5 billion as the combined population of Russia and China. Second, you need to scope out the problem and break it down to fundamental questions. If a variable of your problem is too technical, it can be difficult to estimate even a ballpark figure. And in that particular case, you can go ahead and ask your interviewer for that particular information. Be very upfront about what estimates you are taking. Is that a ballpark figure or do you have a good idea about that particular number? Remember, you can and you should always ask your interviewer the questions that you don't have an answer for. Third, you need to sense check your results. As mentioned multiple times in this particular video, it is crucial that you spend at least 30 seconds to one minute sense checking your results. In practice, you should check your intermediate results as you progress through the estimation and your final result at the end. But here, we are checking all the numbers in one place so that it's easier for you to keep track of what you are doing. Always remember that there is no right answer. Be confident and if possible and if time permits, explain to your interviewer what factors you would consider if you had more time. What elements did you ignore because you didn't foresee them to factor significantly in the calculation? This helps in anticipating your interviewer's qualms about your answer. When it comes to estimation questions, know that companies are not looking for a precise estimate, but they are more interested in understanding what your thinking process is. Thank you for your time, everyone.
in case you have any questions feel free to put them in the comment down below and we'll make sure we respond to each and every one of them take care everyone and i'll see you in the next one